Hey guys, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization and Wattify Rise. We're partnering together to make sure that you have the tools to push your challenge participants as hard as they can go and get them the results they need. On the Wattify Rise side, it's a platform to make sure all the execution, planning, and management goes as smoothly as possible. On the RP Diet side, the RP Diet app takes care of all of the nutrition for your participants so that you don't have to worry about it and you can focus on doing your best job. The first tip that might help your challenge participants is to make sure they're setting clear goals and you're helping them do that. What, is it, what do we mean by clear goals? Well, you can set goals that are just like lose as much weight as possible or get as lean as possible, but that's not very realistic, nor is it very clear. What does as possible mean? And because you only have a finite amount of time, probably eight or 12 weeks for folks to get in shape, it's important that we set the goals as realistic and as clear so that once they're attained, we can check mark that off and say we actually did it. For example, if someone can lose in a healthy and safe way between roughly half a percent and 1% of their body weight per week, that means if they start out a challenge at about 200 pounds, they can end up at something like 190 or 180 at the end of the challenge, feel super successful if they did something very awesome, which they did, and also know when they've accomplished their goal, they check mark that, everything is good, and they're on to their next challenge. The second tip is to make sure that your participants are getting the most that they can out of their challenge by making sure that they have the bandwidth for actually completing the challenge and doing everything it requires. What do we mean by bandwidth? Well, basically, Challenges are tough. They require you to diet, to meal prep, to make time for training, and to recover from the very stressful activities, which all of those are. If you have an individual who's interested in a challenge that works a crazy work with a ton of other responsibilities, already super involved in fitness in many other ways, maybe they're not going to be successful. They might just burn out. So if you have some kind of vetting process for folks to make sure they at least know what's expected, know what's coming, know how much work they're gonna have to do, it's gonna make sure that they're that much more likely to succeed, which reflects better on you, on them, and everyone wins. Tip number three for getting the most out of challenges is to make sure that when you're in charge of the training folks do, you're ramping it up in a slow and easy kind of fashion. Now, how slow and easy can we really go if it's an eight to 12 week challenge? You gotta get in the meat potatoes pretty quick, but what you don't wanna do is expose people to massive training loads right up front that has a very, very high correlation to injury in the scientific literature and also psychological burnout. After the four hardest workouts of their entire lives, a lot of people are just not gonna come back for next week and people who fail out of challenges are good for nobody themselves or you. So what you wanna do is at least to some extent ease people in. Is the first week gonna be challenging? Yes, but not the most people can do. The second a little tougher, the third a little tougher, probably by the third or fourth week, they should be rolling at full steam, but you don't just wanna smash them right up front. You want sustainability. You wanna to get to work, but you wanna ease in to make sure they can survive physically and psychologically to be successful. Tip number four is about making sure folks get the right kind of diet input for the challenge. Yes, training is super important, but diet makes a huge difference. A lot of times, simplifying the diet goes a really, really long way to making it effective. It's a short challenge, only eight to 12 weeks. Folks can't get their PhD in nutrition and do the most intricate plan ever during that time. Simplifying the diet, sticking to basic foods, some favorites, doing batch cooking, making sure not to get too exotic is a really good idea. We found through our many years of experience and research at RP that folks who keep their diet relatively simple, especially in the short term, have a much higher chance of success. When eating turns into a machine-like job, during the time of the challenge, it can just get done and success can be had. Next tip in making sure your challenge participants are successful is in modifying the plan as needed and checking in with them to keep on track. What that means is basically altering the program for training and altering the diet so that they're consistently making results because the body, as you well know, tends to resist adaptation and every now and again needs a further push, further reduction in calories, further alteration, further different change, something that has to come from you because a lot of times challenge participants, they're just gonna do what they're told. They're not really sure how to adjust. Good news, we have some helpful tools for you and your participants. Wattify Rise tool and the RP Diet app can both be used both by you and the folks that are doing the challenge to take care of their diet adjustments and to keep people motivated, on track, and checking in so that they don't fall off the wagon. By tracking this way, you can make sure everyone has their best chance for success. The last tip 
to help your participants in your challenge be successful is to know when to use grit and discipline and really push them. Here's the thing, a lot of times kind of folklore says you gotta be just hardcore and push, 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 but there's only a limited amount of bandwidth individuals can use up in their ability to exert discipline and willpower. The thing is you only have so much of that stuff. If you push a 100% from the first week, you can burn out a lot of the folks in your challenge. The best way to do it is to use it as needed. If they're momentum machines, if they're going strong, they're training, they're dieting, they don't need any input from you, just say super nice and supportive, positive things, you don't have to tell them to grind. If they're struggling, if they're doubting themselves, that's the time to get on them a little bit more. So when you do get on them, there's a big reserve of how much of that they can take and use effectively. Use grit when you have to. When you don't, let people coast and get the easy results, get the success that they need, become successful for themselves and of course, for your business.